and a nice sharp chisel can be put in there and used as a scraper just because it's more or it's easier a to get that flat because we want it flat for our plank to sit on but also we can change the angle quite easily to try and get it right and by dragging that through we can get quite a reasonable shaving and the harder we press the thicker the shaving and just by lifting the chisel as we come back we can change the angle check with our off cutter plank and what we want if we hold it on our hog down at the mould it ought to fit our mould pretty much we've got a little bit to trim off in the, on the edge but then if we keep that flat on the hog and draw it aft we should be able to see it slowly curve up and end up at the angle we need it to to sit on the transom now we're just looking at that I think we need to take a bit more angle off in that section and maybe just a little bit forward of the mould that's giving us a pretty good angle there and if we keep our eye on that so just a little section there where it, the outside of the plank dips before it comes back so that's a good indication we just need to take a whisker off there So actually it's that got a little bit on the bottom of the mould there that's interfering with it. That's not looking too bad. If you just run your finger along it, you can tell if it's very lumpy. We've just got a little bit where it comes onto the transom that we've got to deal with. So our piece of plank now will come back there. Run out there, touch our mould and carry on forward so we've done that for this sort of short section we now got to work sort of one mold at a time plane it away get it looking something like it and eventually get to the front so to try and get some idea of what happens as the plank curves up the stem we can uh, hook a batten up further back to the moulds and then just bring that up and try twisting it into place to give us an idea of the bevel required on the deadwood to land the plank on This batten, ta this batten tapers away at the front, so we'll chop it back to a constant size. <coughs> and this really just gives us a guide. There's no substitute for wrapping the plank up there and then just digging away the final 
millimetre or two to get the plank to sit properly because our plank doesn't actually go up there flat it curves up there so if you cut this flat it's going to be wrong shaved away a bit of that rebate there up the stem and we'll take a little bit more off further up but then we've got a, a thin plywood version of a garboard plank there and we can just clamp that up and fold it up around the bow and just see quite where we're going and what we're doing. for our garboard plank sort of in place we can scribe a bit later on we can scribe along from off the keel and get that shape exactly but at the moment we're more concerned just about what's going to happen at the, at the bow here and how that's going to roll in there and I think Looking at that, we need to take a bit more off our pattern there. Maybe something like that. So this is just hopefully something like our garboard plank will be. When it'll have to be steamed to twist up into there. It's not long enough, but we can see inside that we need to take more off up here. and gradually the whole thing will start fitting in. But we can't really afford to cut it exactly to this pattern because when we steam the real plank in it's probably going to have more curvature on it and it's going to be curved in every direction. This plywood's pretty stiff and doesn't really react the same way as a steamed plank does. What we've got to decide really is how far up our garboard's coming because by the looks of that it only came up to there on the stem pattern. I don't know how they kept it so low to be honest. Because if, if this was a Foy River for instance or a, a motorboat or anything you'd have that. This obviously got to knock forward and be trimmed to fit in there or stick glue sticks on or whatever. But you'd have a sort of five inch plank back here 
and this top edge would just be straight the bottom would be cut away and it would just come up to wherever it comes you know up to here would be pretty reasonable but then from there on up to split that into ten planks they're all going to be a bit on the narrow side I just thought yeah mine take off an inch for the robin strake at the top so you're down to two inches of plank which is all right but at the moment we've got two and a half haven't we so we're just looking at the plank widths on the transom really to give us a bit of an idea we put the battens up for the top three planks and uh, they've ended up not looking too bad at the moment we may adjust the widths of them depending on what we work out along the bottom here but the uh, the limiting factor really is the the curve of the transom and, and when we get our plank coming in there that's going to have to bend to the shape of the transom so if we have a wide plank there we're probably asking too much of it to be nailed in in this center so we go for narrower planks that don't need so much bending where the transom's flatter we can have a wider plank we're just working out this section here really this is the critical bit because that's where the, there's most curvature on the transom and so a plank that's two and a half inches wide may not bend around there very happily and the last thing we want to do is to split at the end of the plank. So coming down from the top, that's the bottom edges of our planks. Just to confuse things working up from the bottom we've got the top edges of the planks. So we can just mark in the overlaps. So we've got one, two, three planks there, one, two, three planks there, and we want 11 in total. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we want to fit plank four, five, six, seven and eight in there somewhere and we're looking at about 13 inches if we say on the most curved part of the transom the maximum we maximum we can really get away with is two and a half I prefer a little bit less so let's just try coming down there two and a quarter inches 